It's not okay to judge a book by its cover, but as humans living in 2023, we're gonna judge a video by what it sounds like in the first five seconds. If it sounds all echoey and like amateur, we're gonna click away. So today, I'm gonna be showing you how to avoid that if you're on a budget by using just your phone. If you're starting a YouTube channel and thinking of what mic to buy, there's a lot you have to consider, like your budget, your shooting location, and your channel type. And it's easy to get stuck in analysis paralysis. The thing is, you might not actually need to buy a mic because you can just use your phone. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that, and I'm gonna give you some tips on using an audio-enhancing AI tool that is totally free. But before we get into that, we need to talk about location. What is the reverb situation in the location where you're filming. How echoey is it? The smaller and cozier the space, the better it's gonna sound. It sounds great in the closet, but I've already spent way too much time here and I'd rather not. This definitely will not work. So choosing a location that has as little reverb as possible is really important. This is easier said than done. Having a rug and like things in a space really helps absorb sounds. So maybe placing a blanket or some pillows can help make things better. Next is placement. Holding the phone is an option, but doesn't really come off as professional. It is relatable though, so don't let me stop you if that's your vibe. Gen Z, I'm talking to you. If you have a table in front of you and the phone being in the shot is not an issue, then you can either place the phone on the table or put it on some sort of stand. However, if you want the best possible result, find a way to have it in front of you and to the side just a tiny bit out of frame. I do this for a living and I have a lot of gear, so obviously I completed this task in the most inefficient way that I could come up with, and that's why I'm self-employed. But to get the phone in the right position, all you need is a broomstick, duct tape, imagination, and in the event that these three items don't work as planned, phone insurance. So we're all set to record, but there's one thing you have to always remember, the clap. You're probably thinking, what? Por que lo clap? I'll get to that in a minute. Right now you are hearing the sound from the camera. It's all echoey because there's so much distance between where I am and where the camera is. So the camera is picking up all the sound and the reverb of the room. And now you're hearing the sound from the phone. It is placed right above me and it sounds much clearer because there is less distance between my mouth and the microphone. And yes, you can see it now in the shot, but watch what happens when I zoom in. You can't see it, but the sound is amazing. But there's just one more step left. Go to Google and type Adobe Audio Enhancer. The first result should be the Adobe Podcast homepage. Go to there. It's gonna ask you to sign up for free, which you have to do in order to use the Audio Enhancer. I already have an account. It is a premium account, but you don't necessarily need to have one to use the AI. Drag the file you wanna enhance and drop it into the blue square. It's gonna start processing and it could take a hot minute. Now that it's done, you can see that the effect is applied on a sliding scale of 1 to 100. This is how it sounds at the maximum. It sounds much clearer because there is less distance between my mouth and the microphone. Now let's compare that with what it used to sound like. It sounds much clearer because there is less distance between my mouth and the microphone. Let's try something in between around 50. It sounds much clearer because there is less distance between my mouth and the microphone. So we started out with the super echoey audio from the camera. It sounds much clearer because there is less distance between my mouth and the microphone. And now we have the AI enhanced audio from my iPhone. It sounds much clearer because there is less distance between my mouth and the microphone. Now it's not perfect, there's still a bit of reverb and it sounds a tiny bit robotic, but adding some background music can help hide all these flaws. It sounds much clearer because there is less distance between my mouth and the microphone. Now let's talk about the clap. When editing, that is gonna help you sync the sound from your phone to the file from your camera. Because when you clap, 
It makes a spike in the sound on both the phone audio and the camera audio. When you get into your editing software, you just look for the spike and align them. Now, some editing apps do this automatically, not all. If that's the case, then bam, it just goes really fast. But sometimes you have to do a little, you know, left, right, left, right nudging. If you do forget to clap, it's not the end of the world. It just takes a bit more time to find, you know, the point and like, it's a bit of trial and error, but like, it's still there. And if you're doing some sort of interview, you get the person being filmed to clap because then you can also see the action in the shot and it makes them feel like they're doing something special. People love clapping. They'll clap for anything, even Taylor Swift. Just kidding. And that's how you keep people watching for more than five seconds. If they do click away after five seconds, that is a you problem. Check your sale, check your content. If people aren't watching your videos, then there's probably something that you can improve, either story structure or uh, camera presence. So, you know, don't be depressed. Just take that as a signal to learn more and grow. All that being said, nothing compares to a good old condenser mic used in podcasts or a lav mic that I have right here. It's so good, it's so good. Houston, we've got a problem. So, using your phone is a good option, but if you happen to be doing the editing on your phone and synchronizing the audio is a bit complicated, maybe it's time to switch to a desktop app. And oh my God, what a coincidence. I have a video talking about the top three most beginner-friendly editing apps that I would recommend you try. Cause come on, there's just so much more you can do on a bigger device. And you're serious about making video content now, so this is your chance to grow. So check out that video. Thanks for watching this one. Like, subscribe, and see you later. Okay, bye.